Hello, let me introduce you to the uh, latest episode of the Pure Football podcast, the details of which you've got under there, uh, and you can obviously download it in all your usual podcast getters or whatever the name is. This one is about Liverpool. Many of you know I've got a great affinity to Liverpool for many, many reasons. When I first came to England in uh, the 20th of November, 1991, I moved to Liverpool. And that was because uh, at Liverpoolian had stayed, uh, he was doing Erasmus, that grant that uh, students get so they can be a year away. And he stayed in, uh, in our apartment, our family apartment in Barcelona. And he said, you know, if you ever come to England, uh, let us know. So I said, all right, I'm coming to England. Uh, and that was uh, November when I finished university, and uh, Liverpool looked after me from the beginning. Uh, it was uh, difficult times. Uh, I was doing a lot of work, but I wasn't getting paid, and that happens uh, a lot <laughs> at the beginning, so you have to just go through it. Uh, the Jackson family held me. Uh, I was staying with them for what was going to be originally three months, ended up being a year and a half, and after a year and a half, they said, mm, you're still here, you know. So I went, I went to a flat and uh, worked behind a bar, and then with, um, with a magazine in Liverpool, doing uh, cinema reviews, all kinds of things. Also, one thing that I decided as, as I came to Liverpool is, all right, which is going to be my, my English team, the one that I'm going to support. And having been an Espanol fan and having worn nothing <laughs> uh, in my time, uh, basically I thought, which is the team that is winning everything? This is 1991. And I said, oh, Liverpool. I am in Liverpool. Uh, all right, let's go to Anfield. Fell in love with the club, had fallen in love with the city, and Liverpool became my, my team in England. From the beginning of my football journalistic career, which was later on, because uh, it, I think I started writing about football in 97, so that's about six years after I arrived. From the beginning, Liverpool looked after me. Football club, Liverpool football club. Uh, I started doing television on Sky Sports, and they kind of treated me like if I was uh, one of them. Uh, because they knew I lived in Liverpool. They invited me sometimes for uh, lunch in the canteen with Phil Thompson or Gerard Houllier. Uh, I got to know the players. I was present when the first day of Rafa Benitez and his crew when they arrived to Melwood. So there was a lot of things that uh, made me close to Liverpool. And that relationship has continued. Even though I'm more a Beagles or United fan than anything else right now, I still love to go to Anfield, and I've been present in the in the big nights uh, in recent times and since '91, really, in European nights especially. So, with that in mind, I kept pursuing the idea of uh, f doing some work for some of the media outlets that I work for, including BBC at some point Yahoo, uh, and Sport now, but uh, AS, the newspaper before, and that always helped me. So. What you hear in the podcast are three separate interviews that I've done in different uh, times. The eldest one, or the oldest one, is the one that I did with uh, Henderson and uh, Lalana. And that was an interesting one because that day we had organized for Yahoo an interview with uh, Jurgen Klopp. I'll tell you the story why that didn't come off in the podcast. And what was interesting of the Lalana and uh, Henderson interview, improvised interview really, was that they came from different parts of the world. Uh, Henderson, of course, the north and Lalana, the south. Uh, and that was an interesting contrast. But one thing that they both had in common was uh, to realize the importance of the mind when you played football. So the extra you and I hear is exactly about that. You're walking through a park, Sefton Park, say, and somebody's playing football and the ball falls in front of you. Do you kick it back or you you join them and play? I'd love to join and play, yeah. Probably in the summer, if I was off, I'd probably have a little join in. Just a little one. But during the season, I don't know if I, don't know if I, if I would. Is that being a sport sport? <laughs> I, think, I think I'd love to. But if I'd done Miami or something in the, when I was doing it, that wouldn't go down too well. I met Jurgen Klopp a few times. And I always, I think he knows that when we meet... He's not going to get the usual interview. In fact, uh, on this one that uh, you hear in the podcast, we talked about his family, his dad especially, uh, being tough with him, but at, at the same time, he learning a lot from him. Uh, he made him do all kinds of sports, and uh, he excelled at them. 
Anyway, as well as uh, talking about the dad, uh, once you start getting into the into the job market, if you like, uh, you don't always go to your dream job. You have to go through others. As I said, I had to work in a in a bar. I had to distribute bread at some point. I have to help my dad. In, uh, when he was a varnisher and uh, moving furniture around, all that kind of things that we've all done, haven't we? So in the case of uh, you and Club, I asked him what kind of jobs he had to do. And also, for that time, he struggled uh, his, and his family struggled with, with money at the end of his football career. And that was a bit of a turning point, uh, one that uh, many of us perhaps wouldn't feel strong enough to actually go for the dream, go for the uh, to be a manager, uh, if that is the dream, and we'll just go for the first job that comes in our hands. In the case of you and Club, I think you know the answer, but let him explain what kind of um, jobs he had when uh, when he first had to get into the, as I said, job market. I invested too many years on, on playing football. It was early clear that I will not have a decent career. In these times, earning really not a lot of money, but it keeps you away from a, from a proper job. Mm -hmm. So it's very intense time-wise and all that stuff. I was then a full professional. And when I was 32, 33, there was a time when I was not 100% sure uh, what will I do next. And then I got an opportunity to be, become a, a coach and a manager, and that was obviously uh, very good for me. Finally, you will hear from Trent Alexander-Arnold. I was very impressed with, um, with him. 21 only, interviewed him this season, and basically he's, he seems to have a, a maturity well ahead of his years. But I wanted to take him back to, uh, to him being a, a child and uh, what relationship he, he had with Liverpool, if any. And what was interesting is that he obviously comes from West Derby. And on match day, the streets around where he lived, and he lived in the main road, were filled, full of cars and people going to Anfield. So as a kid, you can see everybody wearing the red and going to the, um, to the, to the uh, cathedral, if you like, to the big place, to the dream place. And uh, I guess that must have stuck in his head, uh, that importance of you know, the journey towards that place that is not easy to get there that is a dream for him to actually get there that happened to him very quickly he wanted to be a Liverpool player he wanted to be a player first but also if possible if the dream came true a Liverpool player so let him explain to you what it was like to be um, a kid in West Derby when you're young you don't realize that you're actually practicing it works hand in hand the more that you do something the better you're going to get out if you keep practicing and without knowing it I was playing so so much football every single day that I was actually getting a lot better all the time. I was I was normally playing with my big brother's friends as well, so I was playing with a lot of older lads who would push me around, kick me because I was probably better than them. They obviously used their physicality to 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 get the upper hand on me, and that was something I had to deal with and try and outsmart them and think mm -hmm. outside the box to beat them. So that's the um, pure football podcast episode dedicated to Liverpool. There is more coming. I'm preparing three more that uh, I won't announce what they're about, but I hope you will be impressed. And of course, there is, this is the second series. There's a whole full series out there, the first one. And uh, so if you haven't checked on it, just please have a look and let me know what you think. Let me know what you like, who you'd like to hear from. And we'll be preparing some more after the second series because I'm really enjoying doing podcasts. I think um, the kind of interviews I do, uh, because they're not really related to news, it allows us to, um, to put it in this format so you can enjoy them. I hope you do. And uh, for now, that's all. Speak to you later. Bye.